Welcome to TRS Clips. I began this channel because sometimes on YouTube, you just want to go on learning sprees. So after this fantastic video, make sure you watch the other videos on the channel. Hit like, subscribe and enjoy. We had an astronaut on the show and I was talking to her about the progress of science when it comes to space exploration. And she said that it kind of improves in steps. You know, you make your way to the moon. Now you're figuring out how to make your way to Mars. You sent a man on the moon. Now figure out how to send human beings to Mars. Um, then you figure out like the next step gradually. Being a scientist and, you know, kind of just, I'm expecting a very practical, dry answer from you. But either way, I'm going to ask you the question. Um, do you think that we will scientifically advance a lot over 1000 years or 2000 years and figure out how to explore these moons and explore Mars much more deeply? And for all you know, maybe what if we find some kind of compound that can protect you from the atmosphere of Venus and at least send a robot there first? Do you think all this is possible? I think we already have the technology to send human beings to Mars. The only question is, can we bring them back alive? The technology already exists to send people on Mars. Mars, But right now, the, the, the risk factor is high. When it comes to sending humans anywhere, we want to make the risk as low and as close to zero as possible. Mm. Right? So when they sent humans to the moon, that itself was quite risky. But th thankfully, there were, there were no casualties. There, was, there were no accidents. Of course, Apollo 13 was a, a near disaster. But it was, they called it a successful failure because they were able, able to bring the astronauts back alive to the Earth. So the technology existed to send people to the moon in the 19, late 1960s. We already have the technology to send people to Mars, uh, Mars, but the only thing is, will we be able to bring them back alive? That's the thing. Technology improves iteratively. You first send a spacecraft in orbit around the moon. You do that successfully. Then the next step is you try to make it land on the moon. You make that work, then you will have a return mission. You make it land on the moon, then it comes back to Earth with some samples. Mm. You do that, then you can have a much more larger spacecraft, maybe a moon base. Then you can start sending humans there. Then with Mars also, you do the same thing. You first send an uncrewed mission to Mars, send it in orbit around, around the planet and bring it back. If that works, you make it land, take back some samples and bring it back. Then possibly you will send humans there and that sort of thing. So it's always a step-by-step, step, step by step thing. I think within the next, by 2040, I'm sure somebody will have landed on Mars, most likely. Uh, I'm sure Elon Musk will want to be the first person to make this happen. Mm. I think it's quite likely that by 2040, if everything is fine, if the geopolitical climate is all good, then we will be able to see humans landing on Mars and hopefully coming back. And by the end of the century, you could have permanent bases on Mars. Possibly. It's quite possible. Mm. Now, when you spoke about sending people to Venus, etc. In the future, you could have technologies where you can have skin coverings that are like 5 or 10 or 20 atoms thick. And that can protect you from the vacuum of space and from the atmosphere of Venus, whatever it might be like. Yeah, it's possible. Mm. Uh, I mean, who predicted smartphones 30 years back, right? Like, you don't know where science and technology can take us. If you enjoyed this video, here's a playlist full of videos kind of related to the one that you just saw. Enjoy.